Uh, hi everyone, thanks for being here. It's uh, very strange to do one of these in uh, person. Uh, you might have seen me before because I've done a few uh, uh, workshops online and also made a few things uh, on LinkedIn. But yeah, today I'm gonna be talking about my furniture madness effect, which you might have seen on LinkedIn and Twitter and things like that. And I'm gonna start by doing a little presentation about myself. So I'm uh, an AR creative technologist, uh, currently focused on making social and utility AR. What that means is that I make stuff that's like very uh, visually satisfying. And as you might know, I'm a full-time developer at GoSpooky, which is an agency based in the Netherlands. And the project I'm presenting today was also made for GoSpooky. And yeah, I'm also a Snap AR ambassador, which is why I get the chance to do these great things. And sometimes an AR consultant. So I wanted to show another few things that you might've seen me do online. So on Twitter and on LinkedIn, some of these posts actually kind of went viral, which is always a plus. And I do a lot of things that mostly use hand interactions. I think it's one of the better ways to interact with AR. Even though it's not necessarily the most practical to use when you have your phone, I still do think that it's a great way to make your AR experiences feel more anchored in your surroundings. So the lens that I'm gonna be presenting today, Furniture Madness, it went super viral uh, not too long ago. Uh, and it actually is a unique uh, and seemingly random portal experience that combines a lot of these different Lens Studio features. So initially it didn't start off as this at all, which is what I'm gonna be explaining a bit later, but this lens, its main purpose is to enable you to open a portal into someone's home and kind of throw their furniture out. Uh, and that was not at all the initial idea. Because this video went viral, I actually received some client briefings uh, due to this, which was really uh, an interesting uh, kind of side effect of that video, you know, making the rounds. And yeah, it ended up being seen by hundreds of thousands of people, which is something I just want to talk a little more today because I think most of the time people, when they make AR experiences, it's not necessarily what they're looking for. And that's why I want to mention and do a little section on why I think viral content matters. In general, I've noticed that from most of the responses I get on my videos, people feel inspired. I feel like most of the people, especially on LinkedIn, don't really know what AR is that much. Twitter, you know, it's different. Like you have, you know, a bunch of AR people following each other, but LinkedIn, it's always a bit obscure. And sometimes it's also very serious, like people are super, super corporate on there, which kind of sucks, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's all right. Uh, and so, yeah, I think these experiences that are a bit more creative, they kind of inspire people into, you know, making more creatively focused uh, content. It also, you know, if you're a freelancer and you have, or you have your own company, this is great because it att attracts clients for professional works. And it even ends up a lot of times on their mood boards. I've heard stories of some of my work being uh, recreated uh, for other agencies, which I will not mention. But I, <laughs> I, that's why always one thing that I recommend is watermarking your work because people will steal that uh, quite quickly. Uh, and yeah, in general, it's great for also starting discussions and you know creating different connections with people in different industries. Also, I kind of see it as an investment in yourself because it can allow you to, you know, build up your portfolio and build up your company's portfolio and it's great. And it also gets you invited to workshops, which is, uh, which is nice. <laughs> so yeah, little parentheses as well. You might've noticed a lot of my work, I post it in horizontal. And this is like a super niche, uh, like side, step here, but I've noticed that horizontal really makes a difference for content on these platforms. And I'm still not sure why. I think a lot of it goes down to just our field of view being very used to this kind of format and also it being more adapted for laptop viewing and also potentially feeling more produced. 
I don't know, but it, it just works better in general, uh, except if you're like posting on vertical platforms. But in general, this is kind of the reception that I got for this effect. Uh, it's really interesting because people kind of see what they want to see in my work and not necessarily what I was really looking for. <laughs> so some people think this was like a hint to mass consumerism uh, and just the fact that people just buy too much stuff. For the ideation process, I think this is kind of a part that is interesting to mention because when I started making this effect, I had no idea what the final lens would look like. I didn't even have the slightest clue that there would be, you know, any kind of physics involved or any kind of, um, yeah, just hand interactions. It, my only idea was that I wanted to do something with VFX and especially with the glow shader. And yeah, I used another asset from the Lens Studio library that's actually called the Boyd's V effect. I don't know if you've ever used it before, but it's great because it makes like this swirly pattern using different forces and it just looks great. But my initial goal was just kind of trying to make a portal. So as you can see here, this is actually the, yeah, the Boyd's VFX I'm talking about, and it uses something called attract repel forces, which creates an interaction between different particles uh, and also allows you to make them move into one direction or not. And yeah, I've also recycled, and this is what I do with most of my work, I just recycle a bunch of components from previous projects and put them into one and yeah, just try to make something that works out. So this is kind of what this project is. It's just a bunch of different things that I've made before mashed into one. Here are a few other references uh, that I used to make this. So some projects that I've seen around and some different things that I've built before. And I kind of reused uh, like the glow effect and also that swirl pattern uh, for this project to kind of build uh, this final uh, lens. Uh, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the creation process. How was this lens uh, created more or less? Uh, so this is like a very general overview. The lens actually started looking very, very different. Uh, it was using a similar kind of portal shape, which is made with something called a torus, which is uh, kind of looks like a giant donut. Um, but it allows you to make particles appear in a um, spherical shape. And I also played a lot with uh, random sounds to actually make those particles move into what looks like random directions. And when I created this project, I knew that I wanted there to be some kind of hand gesture activation. So this is what you can see in this video. Initially, you actually had a ray of the portal that would come out of your hand. Uh, so the portal emitter was swapping positions and going from your hand towards the portal. For the, uh, for the second part, I wanted to, the project to look a bit more like the sling ring uh, effect, which you might have seen in uh, Doctor Strange. So it's this like ring where you just put your hand out and you like spin it and it opens a portal to another dimension. And I thought that was really cool. So I wanted to kind of recreate that in AR. And here's, there's like a bunch of like little nerdy nodes in there that show you how to make some of the different parts of the project. Uh, but basically there's a few other things happening such as uh, the particles that are kind of fading off in regards to time. And I also made the particles more dense and tweaked a little bit the forces. In the third step, I kind of started looking for 3D assets and I actually got this from a colleague that was like, hey, why don't you have like things going out of the portal? I was like, yeah, that, that sounds, sounds nice. So I just took a few assets that I found on Sketchfab and I tried to um, actually optimize them a lot because all of these assets spawning uh, multiple hundred times per minute uh, is really, really intense. So um, I, I had to do a bunch of performance compression on all the textures, all the meshes as well, and just make everything as small as possible, which is something that's really important for these kinds of projects. And then that's when I started building out the physics. So because I wanted these objects to fly out of the portal, I kind of imagined that the best way to do this was using real-time physics. So I used the Lens Studio built-in physics engine, which is great because you can control 
a bunch of things such as uh, gravity and you can also put different kind of forces on your objects so if they appear you can give them like a really powerful force in one direction or you can make them rotate in another and it's great because it creates like a really realistic final result which allows you also to kind of make this whole effect more dynamic. So if you want, you could also walk up to these objects and kick them with your feet, which is what I ended up implementing, uh, different colliders on the feet. So you could just like kick them around and that was kind of fun. But you can also uh, move them with your hand and uh, yeah, I'll go in the workshop a bit how you can build all those things. I thought that looked already pretty good but there are still a few other things missing for this project. These include the hand and foot tracking that I was mentioning. So as you can see, there's also an interaction where when you put your hand up, the portal opens. And this actually, well, I kind of cheated a little bit because <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna admit, I, the, the portal doesn't really follow where your hand is. And I know a lot of people are probably going to hate me for this because now you're going to have clients asking you for this, but um, it basically just starts when you open your hand. So it's for now, it's gesture triggered. Technically, there's a way of doing it with a path, but yeah, this was a one week uh, prototype, so <laughs> not possible. In the end, the project is pretty heavy, but still around four megabytes. So I was quite happy with that. And yeah, in the end, I just kind of tied everything together uh, to make it look as realistic as possible. Decided to implement uh, shadows, which was kind of tricky because it also used a lot of performance. And I also created, because I wanted to publish this lens in the end, I created a system where you can actually place the portal before it actually opens. Because on the first build, the portal would just open. So I would have to like point it towards the wall and run back and then it would open. And yeah, it was really messy, but now it's like all ready for publishing. So yeah, and I added the hand to trigger the spawning completely at the end. Kind of a complicated thing to put in, but now everything's in there.